Welcome back. My name is Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. Today we're building a vivarium from start to finish. Here is the condition it came in. I was very scared that it was going to be broken. I ordered my five gallon marine land three. Well, I ordered it once. It arrived three times and two out of the three times it was completely shattered. I was shocked to see that this one was not shattered. So the bottom part came already sealed and assembled and it's waterproof from there you add these metal rods and you're going to screw those in and then you have your glass there are four pieces of glass and i used all four there's also a whole side where you can do one side all mesh and one side glass glass and mesh I guess if you're wanting more ventilation, if you're not really requiring, or your animal doesn't require high humidity, the doors were really easy to put on. I also didn't have an issue taking them off. It was super easy to do because they just slide right on. And then there are sheets of glass and you may not be able to tell, but I was able to put these plastic parts on the rods and then they had little like notches for the glass to fit into and that was super easy. So we are on my back porch. It's cold outside and I am doing this because I don't have anything else to prop things up with. So I just wanted to <laughs> explain what I'm doing here. So I have strings suspending my pieces of wood because I don't have anything else to prop them up. I took my doors off because I didn't want them to break. Also, I have no way to prop them open. So I have been collecting things. So these are my three pieces of wood and these are all my pots. And this is the rest of everything. So I've got huge pieces of bark with moss already on it from a dead tree. And I'm going to place those on there. I have this piece of wood. And it's really cool. And I don't know. I've had it for... Dude, I don't know. We went kayaking or canoeing. I can't remember if I was in a kayak or canoe. Anyways, I didn't flip that day. That's all I remember. And I found this piece of wood. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I also have this piece of uh, limb that fell and we cut it up. So, I, I saved this. These I used for my aquarium and they kept growing stuff on them. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to foam those in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use zip ties like clear ones and kind of just zip tie that onto that big piece of spider wood simply because I think it'll give him more places to kind of like crawl around and stuff and he can get really close to the light so this is going to be where all of my soil and stuff is I have these kind of like suspended and I'm going to have plants like pothos and whatnot and they're going to come up from the soil and they're going to attach so he can if he decides to go down here he can go back up so this is what it's like so far and then I'm going to record me doing the foam okay so what you're going to do first is you are going to cover the whole back with this spray foam I really found this little nozzle helpful and I was able to put it on the other cans that I ended up purchasing later one cam was not enough. Um, so I did that. So everything's connected to the back. And then once I had done that, I placed my pots. And then once I'd placed my pots, I put another layer of foam kind of like around the pots to secure it better. And I added my bark last. And in my mind, I already had an idea of how I was going to place the pots. But if you're not sure, I really wouldn't do it last minute. I would draw it out or something. Because uh, you don't want it to get stuck. Because once it's in that foam and that foam sets, you really just, uh, 
you're kind of stuck with it. So be sure of what you want. Hello, it's me again, and I'm back. I went through three cans of this stuff, and I only had one. So I had to stop halfway through and go grab two cans. I grabbed two, not expecting to use them, but I literally used all three. So make sure if you're really paranoid, this is a 50 gallon, 18 by 18 by 36. Um, and I used three cans of it. So, and it's a 50 gallon. So just, I would grab four cans. Cause I had a lot of stuff that I used to kind of fill in the gaps and you may or may not have that. So here's what I did. I was waiting for UPS to deliver this and it came at like 10 this morning. It's around lunchtime right now. And I have all my bark and I have a lot of pots in here. Like I think I've used more pots than anyone that I saw use online. And that's just because I want to have as many plants up here as possible. And then also I'm going to have, I got a weeping fig on clearance when I was getting my spray foam. So those are non-toxic. And I'm going to put that in the bottom. I also have a lot of Schlaffera, or however you say it, the umbrella plant. So here it is. And I have this fan. And I'm going to put it here so it's sucking out the air. I believe it takes 12 hours for it to cure. I have school starting really soon. And I would love to have this part done before school starts. So I have three, no, four days until school starts. And I'm hoping that I can finish that. Here are some pieces that... Honestly, this stuff gets so, like, it basically on the outside gets kind of like, it loses its stickiness. And then on the inside, it's soft. So I had to spray another layer, basically. And I'm going to have some vining plants, basically. I think I already said my last clip, kind of just connecting. My friend is giving me this huge Hoya. And it's going to go right here. It's a Hoya Carii, the Heartleaf Hoya. And it's going to be so pretty because it's got super long vines. And I'm just going to get all this and then I've got some I got these and then I have this string wherever it is I got it at Dollar Tree it's right here so and here is that ficus and all that moss looks really pretty so I'm going to use it as well and make the most of everything I don't know if this is going to make this cure faster but I have like a bunch of these fans just around my house so like I said, I'm going to put this on top. I'm going to set a timer for 12 hours. And then hopefully by tonight, I can start carving this off and using silicone to attach some cocoa core. And I really look forward to it. I've got lots of little nooks and crannies here. Like I could put a plant there. This is a really large stick. It actually is a large. And it's from Exoterra. I got this one from Petco, and then this is actually a piece of driftwood that you would normally put in an aquarium. I wanted some difference in texture. Like, I didn't want three pieces of wood that were identical in, like, coloration. So, that just adds some really nice contrast. It's a really dark wood. If you were to put it in water, I'm sure it would have tons of tannins because it's so dark. I added another flower pot here, and I have this really interesting piece of cardboard and I'm really hoping that that sticks and stays and then this whole string system that I have worked really well because I was able to pick everything up and spray underneath it and put it back down and because of the strings I really easily could remember where everything was because with this stuff you've got to act really fast because time is of the essence and if it loses its tackiness like you're just a little you're a little out of luck so this is what it looks like and i will give you an update later be back soon you're probably wondering what i'm doing and um I want to ask that of myself quite frankly but anyways this is moist like you can see there's water droplets in the bag so I am going to cook this cocoa coir I plan on putting it in there for 15 minutes at 200 and then 
Yeah, I don't know if I want to do one tray or two. I don't know. I also have some preserved moss that I got in a plant. And I'm really tempted to put that on the back wall, but I'm not really sure if I should do that. So, I'll be back. So I have carved everything off. I ended up using this box cutter, this blade to kind of scrape off the glass. And then also this X-Acto knife. I cooked this on 200 for 20 minutes on two different aluminum trays. And I did it like a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch in some places. The top level was dry, but some of the stuff at the bottom was kind of like could have been more dry um, but it's not wet I think it's still going to adhere so I have carved I have a nice texture I don't know if you remember this but there was a pot here and I ended up removing it simply because it was going to end up blocking all these other pots so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen pots and I'm also gonna have plants down here at the bottom and I'm excited for that. So something that I didn't really know, and it didn't really end up being a problem for the most part. Only like two pots um, had it happen. I took the paper towels out when I started carving and I'm guessing it hadn't completely finished setting and it kind of came through some of the holes, but not all of them, honestly, like none of the others really had that issue. I didn't do foam all the way around everything because I didn't, I just didn't feel like doing that. So some of the pots are going to be visible, but once I put the plants in, you won't be able to see. So now I've got my silicone, I've got my gloves, and I've got my cocoa core. I have managed not to get anything on my hands so far. However, I cut my hand three times yesterday, so I would imagine like it would be beneficial if you have them to have some kind of glove on maybe not a latex glove but maybe just like a garden glove and then you put the latex glove over it so you just got a little bit extra protection because i didn't cut myself with a blade i ended up hitting some of the objects some of the bark and some of the trees and stuff and uh that's how i cut my hand so keep that in mind so i'm going to show you what this looks like afterwards um, my batteries, I only have one battery. I really wanted to do a time lapse and it's just not going to work out. So I'm just going to give you updates throughout and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so we are in the final stretches and it's nice because you can kind of see the progress. This part of using silicone and coca coir took the longest like i'm talking it took me six maybe seven hours i woke up super early and just kept going and kept going and i would suggest getting multiple tubes of the silicone you're planning on using i used something that said it was non-toxic and it's for something to do with roofing or something and it was gray and it was unscented which was nice because when I got back I got another can of something similar and it didn't have the unscented and it smelled really gross so the top half is one type of silicone and the bottom half is another so we'll see how that goes it may not have any effect at all but it did affect my nose because it was quite stinky and then like I did last night I'm just gonna have this fan running all day I honestly haven't googled or read the instructions on the label to see how long it takes to cure silicone basically but I tried so there were certain places where I kind of had like and there are still some now but it's not as bad because I turned it in different directions and tried to like look at it and see if there was any white you know of the foam for me to cover up and I got the silicone and I like basically made play but play-doh out of the coca coir and I put it into some spots where I just quite frankly like I could not get the silicone in there and I couldn't get my fingers in there because I have quite a lot of crevices especially because I'm using literally so many pots and um, yeah so I had to cut this part off because 
I don't know if you remember, but this part came out really far and I wouldn't have been able to close the door. Also, I think I'm going to purchase some kind of like a photo of some kind because it kind of isn't very pretty and then I'm going to get my razor blade and go and scrape off all of this. I have some Leca coming and I'm going to first move this. First of all, once it sets, I'm going to spray it down and siphon out the bottom. And then from there, I'm going to move it inside, put the doors back on, and then I'm going to start planting it. And I'm doing it that way because I physically do not think that I'm going to be able to move it inside if I plant it outside and then move it in. Like, granted, I'm going to have to move it at some point because I'm probably going to move within the next two or three years. So that'll be a future me problem or hiring someone. But um, yeah, so I have this really cool moss and like this is a really great area and example like I could not get any silicone in there so it kind of just cozied that in there same with this but like like in here you really can't see but um basically in here like I did that thing that I was talking about where I created like a almost like play-doh coca coir and then I pushed it up in there and then I was able to get coca coir to attach and that worked so you can do that and i am probably going to put some mosses on here as well like i did with that but yeah i have a ton of moss i have this moss i have some more moss like i have a whole kinds of mosses i have this whole bucket of sticks i've been collecting that i haven't used yet this came with one of those living scents planters I'm thinking about putting this in the middle, like on the ground, but I don't know. This may be for another project. I've seen mixed reviews of people, like, there are some people that are like pro, you know, making your own jungle vines, and then other people are like totally against it because they think that the animal's gonna ingest it. And I honestly haven't decided if I'm going to put silicone on here and basically roll it around and the coca coir and make some vines i may leave it like this i honestly don't know i may not use jungle vines at all because i may have so many hoyas in here that i don't need them honestly and all of these do have drainage they have drainage these especially like they drain straight into the ground so i'm gonna have sprayers here and we'll see all that come to fruition later of course but I'll have sprayers going and those are going to kind of like drip down so these things up here are going to have a chance to dry out more than the things that are planted at the bottom I was thinking about putting like ferns and calatheas I have the cutest jewel orchid that just came in and it has a bloom on it actually so I don't know really where to put it I was going to put it down here somewhere because it's suggested to keep them away from the light because they keep their darker leaves and I think that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to let this dry out. I might go ahead and vacuum some of this up that's down here now. And yeah, so cooking the cocoa coir to get out the moisture actually really worked. So I highly suggest that if yours is in a bag like mine was and it was kind of moist. So I will be back. We are at day three and I have added some sticks and what I did was I used super glue and painters tape <clears throat> except for here I couldn't get it to stay with painters tape so I just used twist ties and I have that rope and I'm just gonna wrap it around there to cover that up and I cut this so I glued this back and it's just to give them more places to crawl around. So everything is looking really good. I'm really proud of the progress and how far everything's come. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is <clears throat> I have a meeting today and I'm going to let this fan run because I need it to air out because half the silicone I used kind of did stink. Anyways, 
I'm going to put the top back on and the doors and then I've got this organic mix and I'm going to mix it with orchid bark and some moss which is in that bowl over there. I'm going to mix it in this and this is like an all-purpose mixing thing. You can find it close to the concrete. It may actually be for concrete but I'm using it for everything else and it even has measurements. So I'm going to be doing that today and I'm going to have someone here to make sure I don't drop it. Someone to help me. I'm really struggling with getting, you can see it, uh, I didn't think he'd be able to, this off of the glass. Like, anyways, everything's really cool. I'm still debating on where this is going to go in my house. I just really don't know. I don't know if I really want it close to my desk or behind me so people can see it in my zooms. So it'd be kind of cool. The only thing is I put this one pot here and you can't even see it now. You really can't. Anyways, there's a flower pot right here. And I thought about spraying it down. I've seen other people do that and like siphoning out the water, but I just don't know if I want to do that. So I'll decide after my meeting. So I will be back. I am going to try to finish this up. Like I'm going to have this planted hopefully by the end of the day. And I got it inside, which was a struggle. I had a roller that I put it on like you use for moving furniture. So I sprayed it down and there are many places where the Coco Coir kind of just came off and that's not gonna be a big deal. I have tons of moss that I can use to cover that up and I'm boiling my Lekka right now. And this is really pretty. I have a lot of this type stuff and it looks really nice. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use some of that and I already have all my plants picked out so I am going to put everything in so I have my soil mix here and it is organic soil with some orchid potting mix and it's basically just tree bark and it also has perlite and charcoal and I also have two different types of mosses so there's like the cheaper kind that you can get and it just has a ton of just little pieces and then this is the kind of fancier so I did this is gonna be funny um, but I did two bucketfuls of the organic mix two bucketfuls of the orchid and then I did four of the moss and that's what I'm going to use and just mix it up best that I can and this is what I'm going to be putting in the bottom and then in the little tiny cups I'm just going to be using this and a mix of this so I'm going to have a separate thing and I'm not going to put moss in that so that's what I'm using so that way this is like really airy and hopefully that combined with the false bottom prevents everything from getting too soggy. I'm also going to experiment with my misters which also came in today on making sure everything's moist and humid without being super wet because I have no way to drain this stuff other than the roots soaking up the water and you know letting it out with the oxygen. So that's what I'm doing for the soil. I'm going to show you how I do false bottoms. I do this in my terrariums too. So I have Leka here at the bottom which you really can't see and then I have screen mesh and it's actually two different layers and then I put this aquarium gravel on top of it and it's really nice because it filters the water a little bit. Now you could also if you wanted to be super extra do a layer of the I don't know what it's called but it's like that weed mesh stuff you put it in your bed so you don't get weeds 
Anyways, you could put that on top of here and then also do another level of gravel if you wanted. I'm going to start adding my soil and you just want the water to have a place to go. You don't want the water touching the soil because if you have water touching the soil for long enough, the soil will begin to rot and it really will stink and your plants roots need air and oxygen and uh, they will begin to rot if they're left in saturated soil for a really long time. So that's why I do that and then I think I'm going to go in, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to clean off my plants that I'm fixing to put in here because they have soil that had fertilizer on it and I just don't want there to be any um, artificial fertilizer. I think what I'm going to end up using is there's this really interesting like fungi that's really good for plants. I'm going to put that in here and also some, it's like seaweed juice or something. Anyways, I'm going to have to fertilize in some way, but I need something organic. So if you have any ideas, comment them below. Okay, get ready. Look at it. Oh my god. Oh! So I've been very busy since my last update. And I have completely planted this. And put in a misting system. And ventilation and lighting so I've been a very busy girl so let's just see who all got upgraded so one of my ferns some cuttings of my rabbit foot fern let's open this here oh my god it's like a little rainforest oh anyways I'm really smitten with how this has turned out there's a lot of dirt still on things so this is one part organic, one part bark, and then you can see the false bottom, and then I do have some netting here. So my anthuriums, the majority of them actually did get upgraded in here, and I just think it, it's really great for them because like especially this one, like this one would be really easy to drink water off of, like honestly it's kind of bougie like ugh, and it has some newer leaves coming I hope that there are more large leaves so this one is kind of like the centerpiece because it's such a large plant and then my very provocative ficus is in here and um, I'm hoping that it kind of fills out I do have two alocasias and they're very small there's the dragon scale here and then there's one as well and I'm hoping that they kind of fill in the silver dragon may be removed simply because it will get larger and this is a it's a bambino African mask oh you fell we're gonna put you back up here anyways I didn't glue this one but we're getting there okay so I've got several different calatheas and you really can't see them I have, I believe that's Stella Maranta, Crinkle Fern, Radicans Luxurians Cross. This is a ficus and it is non poisonous. This is Rabbit Foot Fern. And then we have the variegated umbrella plant. My Staghorn Fern is going to do really well in here and I look forward to that. I have my air plants all of them except for my huge one and then this orchid this is a jewel orchid and you can't see it but there's a flower there like you really can't see it i will post pictures of course once it blooms this is my doc block magnificum right there i don't know which doc block hybrid it is they didn't specify this is one of it's super bright um one of my air plants this one's too so i just kind of glued these on and i did use hot glue so i had to zip tie this on here so i'm hiding that zip tie with that and then these are just some mosses this is to hide because i did spray foam this you really can't see but you can definitely see on this side and I have my Hoyas at the top. I have this 
these misters pointing kind of down and they don't really they get water on their leaves and whenever they have their aerial roots they'll get some water that way my anthurium clarinervium and then my anthurium this is a seedling i grew this from seed i have four of them i had three seeds but one of these seedlings got so large i actually separated it so that was really nice i have this one just kind of it's pressed against the glass so that's kind of why it fell this is a rooted peperomia and then there's the actual they're kind of like sad looking i have a larger plant that i pulled these from this is my tenanthe my fishbone tenanthe here's another peperomia right there the jewel orchids i'm hoping like really grow and like because I saw the ones at the U.S. Botanic Garden and I was in love with them. Like, they were huge. Obviously, these are very young. These two actually were one plant that I purchased. This is another air plant. Like, it's just so fun and frilly and I feel like it adds so much texture. This is a pup from a prolific plant that I have and it's called a pink star. That is an empty pot. And there's another one in here. Oh, where is it? This smaller one behind that orchid. And then the orchids basically have a lot. They're not 50-50. So they don't have, none of the plants and pots have the same mix as down here. I put two parts sphagnum moss in this bottom section just so that way it's airy and light and you can see the air pockets you can also see my arm very well let's see you can see the air pockets and you can also see that there's not a ton of water in here like there's no water standing and it's just because honestly i haven't really misted it and watered everything a ton I think I may have to go in and hand mist this a few times, but I'm not entirely sure, honestly. I'm thinking that this mister, like maybe the water will run down because I did experiment before I brought it in. I rinsed everything off and I kind of wanted to see like how the water would kind of flow down if I pointed the misters there. So that's what I did. But if this gets too dry, I will probably mist it. But right now, I have it programmed to... Also, I've never installed a mister before. But I have this one, and it's just filling, or it's being filled by this distilled water from Kroger. And I have it going off for 15 seconds every 24 hours at like 740. So, I'll be able to enjoy watching it be misted. Hopefully, I'll be home at that time I don't know life's fixing to get really crazy for me and then I have this moss that I've used to kind of fill in some of the areas where the coca coir didn't didn't quite stick you can see some right there you can see some of the white but as everything grows in and like the plants start to take over like hopefully you won't be able to see that as well like my dream is for this to just cover this like that would be so amazing i am having a little bit of issues with this and i don't know if it's because it's an end piece or what but it just kind of is dripping whenever it's running and i'll show you what i mean and then i've been locking this just because i'm afraid it's going to open but so it's so cool. It's just a simple little lock. So I'm gonna press the manual button twice so it'll turn on. So you can see it's dropping water. Like it's dripping. This one's not. And I, it originally was dripping further up And I was able to fix it. And they both drip a little bit once they have turned off. And I think that's just it kind of clearing. But this one, I, I need to play around with it. I think something's loose because it's dripping instead of just spraying. So I did move 
some things around and I'm really happy with it. Velveeta's gonna get her bed back and her food. Um, <laughs> she's just so calm, she just doesn't care. But I'm gonna put all of her stuff back where it was and you know, give her her space back. Because this is like such an uninterrupted area. Meanwhile, here I'm at my desk, there I just didn't want it to be in such a busy area. Oh, she's going to bed. Now she's not because I'm staring at her. But anyways, I could not be happier. I cannot wait until everything grows in. I hope everything goes well. I'm sure there's gonna be some trial and error in this as there is in everything and anything. But yeah, so far I'm just super happy. This is a special light. And I say it's special because Dang, it is really bright. I don't even know what brand it is, but it has special settings. Um, it just says on, but it doesn't show that for whatever reason on the camera screen. So these two are going to be on all the time. So I need to plug them into the wall instead of the timed outlet. I have everything in the timed outlet just right now. And then this is a special light because it can do sunrise, it can do sunset, it can do sunrise, midday, twilight, sunset, and then off. So you can have all the different days. I don't know if I'm going to really utilize that feature because I have this light, but I may or may not switch that bulb out. I just really don't know. But so far, so good. I really wish I had done a video on this misting system because I'm sure people could have benefited. It was a $40 misting system and it was a brand that I didn't recognize. So, and I need to take off this sticker here that says the left and right door. Yeah. I'm just super excited. Hopefully everything goes really well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.